Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Crubcast, the award-winning podcast. You have no proof that it hasn't won awards. My name's Kevin, also known as the Golden Bolt. I'm here with three of my fellow co-crubbers, including All Hail Buckets, the Dancing Man. Hi, Nico. What's up, gamers? Mr. Travelton himself. Hi, Trav. Mm. Also known as that Trav guy with the the very interesting uh, intro. I don't know what that was. You just kind of made an owl who into the mic there. Mm. Yeah, that. And uh, Mr. Wolf chaos Hi, Sean. Hi, that's me. I yeah. exist. Um, so today we're going to be talking at least uh, briefly to start the episode about uh, video game pacing. Uh, and the reason that this one came up was uh, something that I had uh, thought of recently while playing God of War 2. Uh, I realized as I was going through it that that game is damn near perfectly paced all the way throughout. Uh, as, as, a, as a game in general, it is a, a stellar improvement on God of War 1 in most ways. But mm. I realized the big thing that stuck out to me was that it's slightly longer than the first game. And it's a game that they they fixed the first game's problem where they kept you in one specific area uh, for way too long without too much visual stimulation to every single hour it changes you to a new area and it it just builds in a stellar manner. And it got me thinking mm. about other games that uh, really nail pacing or really don't nail pacing, but uh, we'll go into more of my thoughts on those in a little bit. Trav, uh, I, I'm going to go to you first because I'm curious, uh, what is pacing? Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, according to Webster's Dictionary for Gifted Youngsters, uh, Piction, Pictionary we're not, we're not is a gifted. game where... Oh, okay. <laughs> Pictionary. Um, <laughs> Pictionary. <laughs> um, so, I mean... That's awesome. When I think of pacing, when you ask me, like, you know, what is good pacing in a game, it it's a lot of, I guess... So I'm going to say it's just keeping the experience fresh as it goes on. Um, even though the ways that they handle that could be different, it could also vary person to person. Uh, so a lot of what we're going to be saying in this video is subjective, unfortunately, because uh, what you find boring after a while, what you find stale might be more tolerable for different people yeah um it definitely sounds like i'm making up an essay that i have to give to the class that In i didn't prepare for I but i did prepare for this mm. um <laughs> Proud of you. no i um but no like uh a lot of the games that i play are more action oriented they're not very slow um mm. well slow is also subjective you know what i'm trying to say um so like uh when i think of pacing it's uh you know keeping it fresh um, I guess to keep it more broadly, if we want a more specific answer, because you probably want to move on to someone else before I, uh, by now, but, um, name, name, name a good example of a game that has, uh, yeah, good was just pacing to, to you before to we get jump. It. Um, yeah. so my mind immediately goes to, uh, something that I know that we haven't all played, uh, Pizza Tower. Um, and it's mainly because of its gimmick that is also shared with, uh, Wario, the, the Wario Land games and that. A, a new gimmick is given to the player practically every level. There is something new, uh, a new mechanic to learn, a new power-up to learn, uh, so that the creep uh, of playing the game through all the way, uh, assuming that you're not going back and going for collectibles, is um, you're going to be spending a lot of your time learning a new mechanic, and then by the time that mechanic even starts to get boring, it drops it, throws another one at you. So you're mm. always engaged. Um, it always feels like you are uh, learning something new. The experience is always fresh. That's a good one. I think that's a uh, mechanical progression. And like that game does it in a way that um, reminds me of at the surface level. I haven't played pizza tower, but watching you play it at crib last year, yeah. uh, it reminds me of sort of what a hat in time tries to do, which is mm -hmm. I've uh, heard of that. Yeah. Cause that game has a very like, uh, ADHD style pace to it where it's almost a different game every world and yeah. that to me detracted from the game I actually didn't like that because the game had such good gameplay mechanics and they never really used them and so that mm. always stuck out to me but so Pizza it never Tower, like, played to its uh, strengths I yeah guess. yeah uh, and so so Pizza Tower did the opposite of that where it seemed to actually succeed at introducing things and then playing on them and building on them in an organic way uh, so that's mm. a good one um Eeny, meeny, yeah. miny, mo. Nico. John you, can go. No, no, Nico, you go. Okay. Speak. 
Um, Tell us about how Elden Ring is paced so poorly. Gosh, I'll, I'll <laughs> no, fight No, actually. no. Well, that actually does bring up a, a good point, though. I, I think like, what and I, I don't, don't? Um, we'll table this for perhaps after we get through Sean's. But, you know, how do you pace a video game? Right. Like, and especially something like Elden Ring, where it's very dependent on the audience's input. Right. And how you Trav play the game. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you pace something like that? Right. It, it's it's kind of a heavy lift. Right. And it's like, I think when we're talking about pacing, at least for me, I will be talking about the main stories. Generally speaking, main quest, main quest as much as I can, because I think like, you know, main quest and like perhaps essential side, like if there's like an essential side quest, right? Like Kevin, I know we've talked about um, Final Fantasy Rebirth uh, in the past about how they have like sections of side quests where it's like, yeah, this is kind of a lot. But, um, Mm. you know, I'm not. I suppose I'm not necessarily counting things like that unless it's mandatory. That said, good pacing, Bloodborne. Um, I'll, I'll, uh, Brody's not on the podcast today, so I'm stealing his answer. I think he's right. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, it's got everything. I, I'm going to try and, and keep this sort of concise because I think it's kind of self explanatory. You go through the game. Essentially, if you create your build in a smart way, you don't need to grind at all in that game. You can just be at the right level. And I really, really, really like when you only have to do things once and it matches like the tone of everything and it matches like the difficulty, so to speak, right as well. Mm. And I suppose I'm thinking more in terms of progression than in terms of uh like plot devices i have a better one for plot devices. i'll push back on that in bloodborne's case specifically because bloodborne does one very dated thing that uh holds it back immensely which is that you do still have to grind for your your estes flasky type things yeah that's true and i I think mm -hmm. that they learn the lesson from that. I so feel it's like, like. A, a demon souls healing yeah. thing where you have to loot them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so that really detracts from it. If you do die. And if we're talking a first playthrough, you're going to die. Yeah. Um, that's mm. one thing that, that slowed me down when I first went through it was, was that, uh, more than anything else. And, uh, another game that I, I believe does that, but didn't bother me, uh, because it was overabundant. And that was lies of P because that's just a linear souls game. Yeah, and, you know, lies of lies of P. I think you have your healing items are are rechargeable. I think there they, is they a might be. I, I it's I haven't played it in a few months now, so I'm I'm drawing. A no, me on that, neither. I don't either. You have a limit to how many you have at the very least. Yes, um, and yeah. that might recharge. But but we can get into the nitty gritty of souls pacing because souls pacing so dependent yeah. on no and even then struggles. like I, mm. I just I just needed to give Brody that that representation my my only thing for pacing honestly is not a video game and so i'm kind of saving that for like a deeper dive into it how dare um, you sean what's uh sean what's your opinion mm-hmm. of good versus bad pacing at a broad level and what's your example so for me i think one of the biggest things when it comes to pacing uh that we can look at is how do jrpgs do pacing because you can look at the likes of say chrono trigger and you can sit there and say that game is very well paced because you go from point a to point b something's always happening you're always picking up new characters you're always learning new abilities you're learning new story elements and it kind of all meshes together very well and it doesn't really overstay its welcome either but then you look at say final fantasy 15 where you have moments where the game is just you have so many things thrown at you at once there's a big lull and they have more things thrown at you that you, you weren't expecting at all. Like, you don't have a moment to breathe. Um, so, for me, pacing comes down to how well is everything balanced? You know, are you really rushing through your ending? Are you trying to tell me what's going on instead of showing me what's going on? And so often I've seen a lot of games kind of struggle with that, um, especially in the... Uh, uh, like I said, the JRPG style, you see a lot of games that kind of like t- 
take too much time to get to certain things, which is fine because, you know, you're playing a JRPG. You want to put a lot of hours into it. But at the same time, if there's nothing to push you forward other than like, well, you know, I really, really got to play this so I can fight the boss. And so like, it gets good eventually. Two hours. Yeah, it's, it's like one of those situations. Um, but another game that I think is actually really well placed, uh, paced, uh, and they did this even in the sequel, is A Link to the Past. I think that game is very well paced. Uh, it's an adventure game where you kind of can go at your own pace. But with that said, anywhere that you go, you get, say, like a new item that's going to show you, uh, you know, how to use it. Then you can use that in another area and you just keep getting more. You keep learning more. And they kind of did the same thing uh, in A Link Between Worlds. The only difference is in that game, you can actually buy your uh, upgrades rather than, you know, finding them. And I think that also gave you your own pace. And there's a lot of respect. Yeah. And there's a lot of respect that the developers give the player. It's like, hey, you know what? You go play how you want to play. And it's going to still feel good to progress through the game. Um, so yeah, those are, those are a couple games that I think of like immediately when someone says like how, you know, it's a well-paced game, Chrono Trigger and a link to the past immediately, immediately came to mind. Like the moment I read that prompt, I'm like, Oh, it's there. Yeah. Hey, I have an interesting, have you ever set. even played Chrono Trigger? No, I'm kidding. I, I haven't. <laughs> I have an interesting, uh, I'm not a huge fan of either uh link to the past or link between worlds which mm -hmm. uh, is usually controversial as a Zelda fan. But yeah. uh, I think Link to the Past is better paced than Link Between Worlds simply because oh, yeah. every dungeon in Link Between Worlds is a first dungeon, dungeon excuse me. Mm. And I never really get that much satisfaction out of doing a first dungeon in a Zelda game, uh, let alone eight times, you know. So that mm. always uh, stuck out to me uh, as something that I was not super fond of. But that did bring me to... Uh, Metroids, because, you know, we're talking about mm. uh, giving you items in the overworld to progress through everything. And mm. Metroidvanias are just that. And that's true. A good Metroidvania pacing is probably better than the, just about any other game's pacing because it's such mm. an organic uh, discovery. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like it also has to, you know, like it, it, yeah. the pacing of it, the game, your enjoyment of the game of a Metroidvania is going to be influenced a lot by how well it's paced. Yeah. Um, yeah. More so than other genres, I think. Oh, for sure. So, I, I am very much inclined to agree to agree. Yes. I'm very much Ingrid. inclined to agree with you on this. I've never played a Metroidvania explicitly. You've played Dark Souls. But I. That's what I was getting yeah. at. I think Dark Souls qualifies as a Metroidvania in this case. And. For that reason, I also think Dark Souls is very well paced and satisfying. It's satisfying progression. And that's why I, I think I so vehemently agree with you on that. Yeah. Like, so, I, I think back to um, go, go ahead, John. Go ahead. Well, I, I, well, say your example and then I'll bring up an idea that I had. I, so I go back to my first playthrough with Metroid Prime, which wasn't until like 2014 or so. Um, and I played the Wii version uh, with the Wiimote controls, which I actually preferred over the weird GameCube controls. Uh, but I remember just how remarkably paced that game is. And you you hear yes. like, with a game like Metroid Prime, you hear so much praise about it. And you, you, at some point, you're like, there can't be that good. You know, like there's yeah. got to be some part where there get hitches or where there's a catch. And there is not really a single point in Prime that I can think of off the top of my head that does have that issue. Like I found most collectibles on my first go organically. Uh, there was never a question of, and dread does this too. There was never a mm. question of where I'm supposed to go because it organically leads you to that, but makes you feel smart yeah. for doing it. And that's the key mm. to a Metroidvania is it's not about being smart. It's about feeling smart, mm. which is yeah. true for every puzzle and, and any good puzzle uh, section. Dude, oh, absolutely. Sure. Um, which. No, Nico, go ahead. It's okay. No, it actually like brings me to something that I, I think I just want to touch on, right? Is like giving, you know, the rate at which you give your audience to and then you give your audience to and you let them make four. I think. Oh, OK. Yeah. I mean, that's super I'll, cool. I'll like in a, back, in a game like a Metroid. I'll bounce back yeah. to God of War 2 actually briefly, because yeah. one of the things I love about that game is there are a couple times where its puzzles are maybe a little too obtuse still. Uh, 
there really weren't any like I didn't have trouble with puzzles in God of War one, and I don't really th- I didn't have troubles with puzzles with in God of War two either. But in two, they're all just paced perfectly enough. Where like the the first example I think of is pretty early on. You uh, are looking at like a, there's like a switch puzzle. So you got to pull a switch, and there's a pressure plate, and you need to have both of them active at once to get through two doors. And they do this a couple times, but the first time you're going to end up confused. So you're going to go back to the prior room and explore briefly. And Mm -hmm. one of the things that stuck out to me was like, there's a bunch of like skeletons hanging. And I had like messed around with one, but for some reason in my case, the collision detection wasn't like there. So I didn't know you could knock them down. Second time, I'm like, oh, you can knock them down. I might as well do that. And in the far back, there's a non-skeleton body, which is the weight that's enough to cover the pressure plate and they do that a couple Mm. times where you're like just a little like i don't know what to do and then like it's a moment later it hits you and super cool it's just long enough that it gives you that little eureka and Mm. for that i'm i'm just yeah i'm always in awe when a game can give you that eureka just at the right moment before you're like okay this is poorly designed yeah i have a tv show that i think does that relatively successfully okay and Perhaps this is some recency bias, and um, maybe folks can tune in on the Patreon for our talk about it uh, when that drops. But the Fallout TV show actually does this very nicely, at least for me. Mm. I felt that I was given a lot of the tools to understand what was going on without being told it directly, at least not Mm. like, you know, for at least not until they like. Pay things off. They, yeah. you know? they set the but, rules of that world up well enough that even if you're not a huge Fallout person, it just works as a show. Yeah, and which, yeah, I, I didn't know anything about the Fallout games, like for the record, and and you know, for the best, for the best. Gosh, yeah. but I mean, that show was excellent at just giving you little so nuggets of information here, information mm-hmm. there. You look at something written, you know, uh, on a piece of paper, like the background yeah. details, right? And it's just super, super cool. And they did an excellent job of like foreshadowing, and the pacing I think was spot on for me yeah. personally. Mm-hmm. And I, um, I do want to bounce back. Uh, assuming you had more to add to that thought. No, nope, that was I, it. I uh, do Kevin. have something to bounce off of that thought, which is uh, that that will be available publicly, as far as I know. But you can get a bunch of extra content at patreon.com slash crub. There it is. Uh, you can get uh, actually it's not just patreon.com slash crub anymore. If you are a YouTube channel member. So if you're watching this on the YouTube feed, first off, hit the like button, please. And thank you. Uh, if you are watching on the YouTube feed, you can hit the join button, and it's the same uh, same price as the $5 Patreon tier. For that Patreon tier, you get all video content. Every piece of video content we make, that's, you know, all the bonus stuff. So Nico talking music with all the crubbers, uh, Sean's doing some tier list stuff that'll be out relatively soon-ish. Uh, and uh, I don't know what our actual Patreon uh, content drop schedule looks like, but we have a bunch more in store that's going to be really, really fun. Uh, plus all the Mario Party stuff, all the VODs that we ever do. So we stream these live on Twitch. You get those as well. Uh, so if you're a Twitch sub, if you're a YouTube channel member, or if you're a $5 patron, you get all video content forever, as long as you are one. Uh, so I wanted to shout that out. Uh, if you're in the audio platforms, uh, leave us a nice review as well, or a mean review, but give it five stars anyway. As long as you give us five yeah. stars, I don't care what you say, <laughs> frankly. I'm a level with you. Trav, what were yeah. you going to say about uh, the Fallout? Uh, actually, no, I wanted to move on to... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I wanted to bounce back to uh, Metroid Prime sure. real quick, um, mm-hmm. assuming that we had nothing else we wanted to no, add you're good. to the Fallout Go for discussion. It. Um, no, I wanted to ask... Uh, so, Kevin, you you beat Metroid Prime in this uh, first-time playthrough, right? Yeah, did I, you... yeah, I did. The only thing I didn't do... like I think I had like 95%. Organically. Okay. Uh, and I even like, even when you get to like, I, I, this might be where you're going. Even when you get to the key hunting stuff, yes, I knew exactly organically where to go just because I was like, oh, yeah. there's that room that I, from the start of the game that I just thought about. Like, yeah, it's, it's in the yeah, weeds, uh, but you can probably explain it better. Yeah, than I for could. sure. That, that's the thing I wanted to ask about because, yeah. it, you know, uh, I grew up with this game at a young age. I looked up a guide for everything and then mm-hmm. just remembered where everything was. Yeah. And then when I, I tried to play through the game as an adult, and was like reading everything, trying to understand like how the game was alluding to a lot of these things that I mistakenly wrote off as being, you know, like, oh, well, how were they supposed to explain that? The, the trick was mm-hmm. reading. Um, 
but uh <laughs> such a dumb thing I, to do. I've had moments um, like doctors that. Doctors won't for tell sure. you this one trick. <laughs> yeah. Nine out of ten doctors recommend this. Um so uh, I wanted to I guess know your perspective from someone who played the game for the first time. I think I knew of the keys being a thing, uh just through osmosis from like a uh, friend of the channel, some call yeah. me Johnny's videos on Metroid. Uh, I think I knew mm. enough about that that I knew that that was coming, but I think sure. I found one or two like sequence breaky. Like I think I found them before just because I was messing around. And I'm like, oh, I can do this. Like that's the thing yeah. that uh, to talk about uh, briefly, like randomizers that I'm not a huge randomizer mm. guy. But the thing mm. about like the Ratchet and Clank randomizer, for example, was that that. That feeling of putting together the puzzle, like the meta puzzle of, oh, I have this so I can go do this thing from earlier now, uh, really mm. triggered something good in my brain. And I'm glad that there aren't yeah. more randomizers that I like for that reason. <laughs> uh, no, I, I actually like I feel that incredibly heavily. I've been having that same feeling playing Pokemon cards where like a very well paced game of Pokemon cards and the critical thinking that comes with it makes me feel very, very, very good. But I don't know that I could. I don't know. I actually don't know in what capacity I can apply that to other turn based games potentially. So speaking of that, mm. Sean was talking about turn based games earlier. Sean, do you have anything uh, else? Uh, yeah, because you were going to mention a game a little bit yeah. earlier when we got side. This oh, yeah. is a turn based podcast. So yeah, turn based Gosh. podcast. Yeah. So my, my question <laughs> was because we, we've been talking a lot like, you know, level design and, you know, really finding, say, like, upgrades or, like, new moves to kind of push you more forward. So my question was, like, has there ever been, like, a time where the story felt very badly paced, where it either felt like there it was so much so fast or, like, it took forever to even just get to the meat and potatoes that kind of, like, really took you out of a game or even, like, really drew you in if it's, like, you know, well-paced? I'll skip the the go to that I would say right now, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, where the middle of that game is all side content that you have to do. Um, I'll mm. say, because this was one I was going to mention anyway, so that's a good shout. Uh, regular Ratchet and Clank games, there are a few times in those early games, as much as I love them, that mm. I I vividly think back both when I was a kid and even like when I play them today still, although some of that is probably, you know, leftover memory. Uh, mm. where the middle of like Ratchet and Clank 1, for example, the pacing really bogs down. Like every level is like 20 to 30 minutes. They're not long, but there's something right. about like the, the story approach from the second act of that game where part of it is that Ratchet and Clank are fighting so much and they're bickering. Mm. Part of it is that they're all side characters in a lot of these levels stories like things are happening but they're they're even less personally involved in the the plot points than they were mm. at the start or later. So they're just kind of doing essentially RPG side quests to progress. And mm. so that happens in one, two has that two near the end of the game where it kind of hits that. And even three, uh, like there's a part in three where even as a more linear game, the mm. story kind of just hitches up for a bit because they're like, okay, we got to do a couple things. And it's a combination of story and gameplay in some of those cases, but those right. often stick out to me. Hell, even... I'll go to crack in time. Crack in time is mostly story, but a lot of that story is padded out, not in terms of like the storytelling approach itself, but in terms mm -hmm. of they make you do a bunch of like gatekeepy side content to progress. Yeah. Like you need a certain uh, number of moons to, uh, that you've done to go forward. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. an L. Um, Trav, what about what about you? Uh, do you have any examples of story pacing that you specifically My, dislike or like even? So this is a recent example of one that took me three playthroughs to finally get through. Well, not not even playthroughs, attempts to mm. play to finally get through, and that's a, a Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. See okay. the uh, Fair. the prologue of that game is so boring. I really, it, I literally did not make it through the prologue until my most recent playthrough which is my third attempt to actually play through the game because mm. it, it's it's a really long prologue which isn't bad like it has a good story but i'm just like all right you're you're holding my hand through all of this for so long that i'm just yeah. like i want to do something else i don't even know if i'm going to be invested in this game it mm. has not presented even a concrete story to me yet so it, mm. like as far as i'm concerned until you finally get through it it's presenting itself like a almost GTA-esque sandbox yeah. Um, yeah. of a yeah. world. Th 
that actually makes me like realize I think like open world games when it comes to like pacing, it can be either one of the like best feeling things in the world or also like one of the like, oh my gosh, can we finally get to the game essentially? Because yeah. like, and that's you what we're talking about, about with Elden Ring. Yeah, because right? Elden Ring's Elden Ring's open world. Another game that I think of that I think is well paced despite not having the greatest story, I think is Skyrim because like the moment you're like set free, you can just go. You could just go yeah. and do whatever. You, there's no hand holding. There's nothing to tell you, like, oh, well, you can't do that. Like, you can do whatever you want. Just go try to do it. Um, whereas another game uh, that I just thought of that I really like, but I can also realize that it's the story and even the gameplay isn't well paced, uh, is Red Dead Redemption 2. I feel like it's very, like, the beginning of that game is very, like, hand holding. It's like, you can't really, like, expand you can't really go do what you want to do but then it finally like opens up later on as time goes on yeah too many baths i don't know i never played it <laughs> gosh do you see too many baths a similar way uh, on the yeah. record nico doesn't like bathing oh okay <laughs> so that's, that's yeah. not I, what i, I meant was, but sure i'll take it i was it. gonna say you can quote him i was gonna say with skyrim i don't <laughs> consider that necessarily like i i would personally not consider that pacing uh mm -hmm. And I don't think you were saying that it was necessarily it, like that game just gives you the freedom to do what you want. I was going to yeah. say, as far as open world games, uh, Nico mentioned like not considering side content necessarily. I mm -hmm. think that you can if you want to. I, I That was just my definition. Yeah, no, I think that it depends yeah. on the game, obviously. But I think that the pacing of side content and how they they meter it out is important because again you know we've talked mm -hmm. about it a bunch with rebirth before that game gives you so much side content immediately but it's a lot of it's very samey and that takes me mm -hmm. out of that element uh, yeah. on the other That's side valid. there's a game like a breath of the wild or a tears of the kingdom where they don't yeah. throw a bunch at you at once they say hey here's nothing in the same way that skyrim does because that game was based on skyrim they say do what yeah. you want figure it out but they mean it you know like yeah like they mean it and that leads to the most do it on your own pacing that I think any game has really had in the modern era, because it is just yeah. so freeing. There's no levels, you know, there's like, like in terms of leveling up, like there's soft levels, but, right, but it's, it's all just organic discovery. And, and they do it in a way that's like that very, I, I call it switch core because mm. all of the early switch games, all of the main Nintendo switch games focus on that. Well, it has to be pick up and play. Because you might be right. playing this on the train, you might be playing this on a on a a boat. I don't know why I said boat, but that's kind of been a mobile <laughs> game curse for a long time. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. so and valid. I think like with like even a Mario Odyssey has that where to a fault where people some people didn't like that game's pacing because so much of it is just collecting moons that are super yeah. easy and being given out to you and they don't necessarily mean anything, but there's that 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 quick pop reward that still feels. Mm. Uh, good to me at least oh yeah yeah um but i was gonna say another game that like does have a lot more side content uh, that i would consider like you know side quests more properly uh mm -hmm. not that zelda doesn't but we've talked about ghost of tsushima a bunch before on the podcast and that's oh, yeah. one where as long as you're not doing everything out of like an impulse mm -hmm. that game is so well paced the yeah, problem is that strongly. our open world nature nowadays, a lot of the time, is to do everything early on. So when you do yep. that, and then they're like, "Here's Act Two. Here's more map to do that in." You're like, "Oh, I, I want to die." Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the way that that game meters out abilities and side quests uh, relatively quickly throughout the story, and it makes you want to do those things because of that same level of organic discovery. Mm -hmm. I think that that game is one of the few open world games in the post Zelda open air uh, genre shift that really mm -hmm. captured being an old school open world game while highlighting that new uh, approach, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah I feel does. like it. I feel like it's in between like I feel like Ghost of Tsushima, right? Like, you know, how we talk about meeting a game on its terms we talk mm -hmm. about a game meeting us on our terms. Mm -hmm. I think Ghost of Tsushima is one of those games where you and the game both have the same terms and it just guides you there. Yeah. 
Mm. Trav, you're gonna love that game when it comes because it's coming oh, to PC yeah, soon. You're yes. gonna love yeah. that game. I'm you're gonna love that game. Happy that it's finally coming. Yeah, to PC. Uh, it's so good, dude. Which was fascinating. Like, they, and they're going that, yeah. all out. Like, you can get PlayStation trophies now on PC games, or at least that one. Like, that's super sick. Oh, I didn't good know for that. them for linking it. Yeah, they're linking it together with like a whole PS overlay hub uh, that you oh. that that comes with the game. Like, incredible. Yeah, they're, they, it was. I did not know that. An interesting first yeah. game to do it with, but. It, I'm expecting that means we're going to hear about two relatively soon. Perfect. Um, oh, yeah. That's what we like to hear, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of games Trav likes, I, I have like a, I have another example of just, I have my example of like bad pacing, right? Like, And it's, I don't want to say bad say pacing, Doom. right? Cause it is a game that I love, okay. right? Like oh, it's not there's it's actually not two games that I love. Um, yeah. It's, it's death stranding. Um, oh, okay. because, okay. Yeah. It's, that's because we were all on the edge of our seat right there. <laughs> no, no, I would never. I would not mention Doom in any conversation. That That's positive. That's good. Is positive. Yeah. That, <laughs> that like. Um, no, I wouldn't mention Doom in any po- in any conversation that's not related to how long I've played it. Um, but I digress. Speaking of how long I've played it. Death Stranding. Um. The first like ten hours of the game <laughs> yeah, is that, like a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> it is the first three chapters are the most dreadful. Like it when you look at the trophy data on that game, it is fascinating how yeah. like every every modern PlayStation game has been able to get like a fifty plus percent beat rate or like forty five at the worst. That game is like thirty percent of people got through chapter two. Like yeah. it's the 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 biggest fall off because that well, game then, sucks at first. Yeah, and you don't understand where. Like you go through most of that game being like, "Where's the fun?" But I have questions, mm. and then you yeah. get your questions answered, and there's the fun. Yeah, yeah. And it like all of a sudden, kind of, you know. Um. So that, that, I mean that death, death training is really just the. It gets good after like ten hours. It. Really is yeah, that it really it's is right. basically a JRPG, like a sixty hour yeah. game. Yeah. So like that's still a good amount. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. No, you're absolutely right. Like I, I ended up loving the game. Me too. I'll, you're right. Like I'll, I think mo- all of us here ended up really liking it. Yeah. Um, it, but man, it really does take a while to sell you on its world and everything. Oh yeah. yeah. Like it is actively um, a bad game for the first three chapters, <laughs> but it's the yeah. most like, it, it's it's the most pull yourself up by your bootstraps you have to suffer to really enjoy it yeah like they like it's actively yeah. Yeah. it's the only time i will give kojima the benefit of the doubt and say that that was intended that it was intended yeah. to be a bad game for the first three chapters or so because then it makes I, I you realize like... that it's good yeah, yeah. that's so now, here's a question do you think that they will mix it up or do better with the sequel I feel or like do you what think it will. I have no, I have yeah, no I, I have goddamn no idea, idea what I, that I game know, is. No idea yeah. what it is or what it will be. But I yeah. do think those first three chapters could have been a mobile game. And I feel like <laughs> I love Death Stranding. Go! It's like <laughs> the, I, I, like I think one yeah. chapter of it was necessary. The fact yes. that it's three is incredible. Yeah. Like it's yeah. it's a ballsy yeah. move, and. I I don't know. I don't. I, I, mean, I, I don't respect know if it's paid it. Off. I respect like a, it. Yeah. Two has like a it ten minute off. trailer where I have no idea what the hell's going on, and and <laughs> yeah. I beat that game. I understood oh, that I, game. I haven't yeah. watched it. it I haven't watched the trailer yet. It's so <laughs> yeah. like I I don't even know, man. I'm yeah, excited. Like, I tried to understand it. There's parts of it that I'm like, okay, I see where they're going with this. That. And you then know, the you average don't. person is like, this is this is uh, very confusing. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. okay, there was an airship at one point, right? I'm not, I'm not misremembering. There yeah. was like an airship, right? Yeah, yeah. there was. Oh, um, that's, like, that's sick. I, I'm going to double down. Death Stranding is a JRPG. I'm going to double down. Oh, dude, absolutely. <laughs> okay. well, someone it told me. Airship, it's got bad pacing. It gets good Gosh. 20 hours in. It's a JRPG. Yeah. Kevin, yeah. you okay. might have. I'll accept that. You yeah. might have been the one to say this, actually, Kevin. This just adds to it. If you. Someone said this to me and it like kind of revolutionized my perception of the map of that game, which Mm -hmm. is that you have to think of it as Japan. Like the map is the United States. But you have to think of it as physically speaking Japan. Yeah, United States. I don't think that was me. It was somebody, and it made a lot of sense (laughs) to me because of how because of how quickly you can get across like 
It treats yeah. the width of the United States as if it's Rhode Island. Like you get across the entire country. I think that, was just, that was just a game United compromise, States. I think. Yeah. I don't think like. I, I, I think I, we truly need to, Kojima's vision of walking across all of America. They should do a director's cut. I, I, yeah, I they just did do one again. If you think oh. about it, just <laughs> like, just think about like the way that you like traverse that game. Right. And how long it takes no, you I to understand go from that. Like, one I just, point. I yeah. suspended my disbelief on that front. Like, yeah, oh, so, yeah. me, me too, me too. Yeah. But someone said, oh, think of it as Japan. And I was like, oh, that's why they made it like this. That makes yeah. sense. I mean, maybe, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. yeah. It just made it make a lot more sense. I digress. I have another one about pacing and it is drum roll, please. No, I don't want to say that. Sorry. I, I learned uh, my lesson. I, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I haven't learned mine clearly. Uh, it's, uh, it's Horizon, Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, mm. Cause I feel like that game is a whole lot of nothing Followed by a whole lot of everything. I, <laughs> and um, the, it's it's good in that it gets you to ask a lot of questions. Yeah, it's intrigue. And that's what, de- like, I agree with you that that and Death Stranding have intrigue. Uh, yes. And, and they don't have much else going for it early on. I, I can give yeah. you that. I think that game is much more of a rote open world game otherwise, which is what makes it tough because, though, like, none of the side quests are really worth doing. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. A lot of the yeah. main story is just carried by that intrigue until the, you know, until the plot dump. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not, just, a, I mean, not a well-paced game. No, mm. but I mean, the game is like, I love that game. I love both of those games. Like, to be clear, I just yeah. thought the pacing was perhaps a little bit lackluster. And yeah, maybe like, they could have drip fed me a little more, you know? And I, I think that's the thing that we also have to like kind of throw out there. Like, just because it's not well-paced doesn't make it a bad game. Like, I don't think Absolutely. that... Absolutely. Like, for example, for me, uh, Metal Gear Solid 5, I don't think it's paced well towards the end. Like, but does that make Metal Gear Solid 5 a bad game? No, it's just. I don't want to go on a random Metal Gear Solid 5. I just no, but I, but I think I mean. Metal Gear, I think MGS 5's big. And again, I haven't played like too, too much of it. But like the biggest barrier to entry for me oh, and this sucks because I love Kojima, but it's the Kojima-ness of like having to sit through like the opening credits for each mission. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want to do yeah, that. That was a weird choice. It's <laughs> such a, it's such a, that's the most Kojima game to ever Kojima. And <laughs> yeah. Death Stranding 2 might pass it. Cause like, that's the I'm thing that was so. scary. The thing that was scary about Death Stranding was, Oh God, he's unfiltered now. Yeah. And then yeah. he made the simplest <laughs> game he's ever made. Yeah, I mean, the most digestible by, like it is immediately margin. understandable. It's like there's no, like there's stupid stuff, but it's all, like you said, digestible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gosh, I, <laughs> I haven't thought of that. And oh my gosh, you might like be about worried. what about going to be bad <laughs> shit. Yeah. Uh, like I hope so. <laughs> yeah, Death, I, I like like you said. Like I've you know played Death Stranding one. I have no <laughs> idea what Death Stranding two is going to be. Like I, I, I went into that trailer. Like, mm-hmm. so, okay, let me, let me backtrack a little. Um, okay. I, I had that same belief of like, oh my God, he's unfiltered now with Death Stranding 1. But a lot mm. of the, the wacky shit came from like, taking basic concepts like healing or a hazardous uh, water a lake or something and then giving it like, oh no, it's actually like monster energy that's like going across our rivers or yeah, yeah. you you time heal, fall you get time you get, fall yeah, yeah time the fall. rain the rain speeds things up but it's like okay it's just here, here's a hazard that makes things die by aging it really mm. quickly nothing new <laughs> of a of an yeah. idea and it's just like it's just a bunch of weird ideas yeah. that take the role of a trope that we have seen a million times yeah. Um, and that's kind of where Death Stranding was the most <laughs> wacky, was just with its rules. Piss but yeah. once that's you understand true. the rules, it's actually pretty easy to understand in my idea uh, pers- uh my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's the um, video game I equivalent. Hope that too is not that way. I hope that it actually gets really fucking weird. Yeah. Like like I view it as Swear a jar. video game equivalent to oh. uh JoJo's. You already had one, Trav, don't worry. Yeah. yeah. Did I? Oh man, I can't believe I missed that. How dare you? Um can't believe I missed that. <laughs> I was gonna say something else about pacing, but I had to write down Trav swear. Yeah, yeah. How apologies. dare you? <laughs> hindrance to the team. That's it. Sorry, Sean. You're, Sean, you're Sean repeat everything. 
I'm, yeah, you're Repeat gone. Repeat everything you've said this entire podcast up until now, Sean. Verbatim. Yeah. Uh, gosh, I don't remember. I'm dumb. That's right. That's yeah. it. You're off the podcast, yeah. too. Yeah. It's just me and Nico now. <laughs> that's fine. But no, uh, I was <laughs> just saying, like, that's true. I'm getting kicked on Zoom, too, for my dad. No. Gosh. Yeah, and I was just thinking, Death Training is just the video game equivalent to JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Like, 100%. And the day that Araki <sighs> and Hideo Kojima work together is the day the world ends. I don't know that people fanboy it quite as much. Mm, now I want to see, right. I want to see shot, Death Stranding fan cams, like the really yeah. bad zooms <laughs> yeah. and like, yeah. like really hard pumping edits. music. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, like yeah. The, the hardest Death Stranding edit of all time. That'd be so good. I wish you we still had montages. Like a Death Stranding montage would be stellar. Yeah, my name's Sam. Yeah. With like, <laughs> with like the funk music in the back, just like the. I I, I need like a Sigma male like edit to Death Stranding, where he's just like running up the mountain to like <laughs> after dark. Timefall can't stop me, for I'm too old for it. I like I like that it's uh I like that it's critical. It's yeah, awesome. Cool. Well, that's Time all. Fall? See ya. Yo. Correct me if I'm wrong, but like I don't remember Timefall having that. Bit. I thought Timefall was gonna be like way more important in like the dynamics of the game and in like the gameplay, and it just was not. It was just like, <laughs> hey, there. your stuff, is, your timer is running out faster yeah. here for your cargo. Yeah, yeah, like barely. I did also right? mark, like, I mean. Timefall also meant that there were BTs in the area. So, I mean, I guess in that way, it's important. That's true. Depending on how uh, heavy yeah. the timefall was. And the more that you yeah. play, the more they make hard timefall anyway, mm. if you don't go yeah. and rest. So anyway, uh, this is not a Death Stranding podcast as much as we want to. It should be. We're not gonna yet. We're going to make a minute-by-minute a, a minute yeah. Death Stranding watch-along. Uh, that's, gonna watch be, along. that's our next thing over at patreon.com slash crub. We're never, watch we're along. never doing that. Every no, minute but, of the yeah, no, going back to what you said, Sean, like, uh, the pacing doesn't denote a good or bad game. Uh, like, the, yeah. like, I chose to mention Ratchet and Clank because I'm like, I love those games, but they have some weird pacing at times. And right. it, it can really kill a game. And mm -hmm. at the same time, like a game like a, a God of War 2 or like, I felt this with Ragnarok when I first played it, where that game has almost a... Uh, it, it feels deliberate that every like level of that game takes just about an hour, maybe an hour ten, which yeah. I, I really think that that was based on the the data that they took from the first game, where the average playtime of their target demo was an hour or an hour ten. I guarantee that's the case. Oh yeah, because there's only one section that's longer than that, and it's the it's the section that the least amount of people like, which was that early section in the in the giant land as Atreus. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, that that felt that was two hours. I timed. Uh, I was recording, yeah. so I timed it. Yeah, no, for sure. That was the only part of that game where I was like, "This is perhaps a little slow." If uh, it would have been like a little, like if it would have only been an hour, I think I would have enjoyed it more. But like to yeah. be the longest in that game, and it's also like the slowest pace in general. It just. Oh. Man. Well, but that's the thing, though. I really enjoyed the Atreus sections after that. Uh, they, yeah. they were just setting up a new game is the issue. Like, that's yeah. that's what it comes down to is they had to set up a new game. They just yeah. didn't. They just didn't make a great intro for it is really what it came down to. Yeah. But is, I, I do have a question, actually. I'm sorry. I have a question for everybody. And I don't have an answer for this one. So, you know, what? go off. I need you to answer. Um, do you guys have any examples Mm -hmm. Just off the top of your heads, no is fine, mm -hmm. of media or video games where the pacing is bad, but it's not bad because they just give you a bunch of stuff at the very end or because it has one slow part at the beginning. Like, I feel like I feel like I'm looking for examples where, like, yeah. maybe they give you too much too soon or I mean, there are whole chunks of Breaking Bad, yeah. one of the best shows yeah. of all time, where it's really, really slow and not not better call Saul slow, where it's deliberate, mm. where they're yeah. like, it's a network show. So we have to fill out time. Yeah. yeah. Um. So that's yeah. one example uh, where mm -hmm. that meanders, you know, season two is pretty meandery. Season three is kind of meandery. Mm. Uh, a lot valid. of season five is meandery because they they. AMC was doing that thing where they split it into two seasons. 
So they had yeah, to fill true. more episodes, essentially. I don't think yeah. that was because they requested them. That like, Unlike with Saul, where from the jump, they said, we need 60-ish episodes. And AMC said, you got it. Like, do whatever mm-hmm. you want. Take whatever time you want. We're not going to question it. <laughs> don't worry about ratings. Do what you want. Yeah. <laughs> Followed by the most perfect story of all time. <laughs> like, like <laughs> they, they let them cook, you know? And somebody yeah. cooked. Somebody cooked They there. did. Somebody cooked here. <laughs> um... Yeah. So yeah, that's one example. I think, uh, Trav, mm-hmm. do you have any off the top of your head of mid pacing? Um, I, I'm struggling to think of one. I'll be honest here. Let me peruse I, my. Because obviously, a lot of shows uh, have yeah. like the filler problem where yeah, like you I, know, I, I've anime, thought of like obviously, yeah, yeah. one that like I, I do came have, to. Oh god. Sorry, Sean. You go. You have an actual example. Say, like, like one that came to mind. It's more so like the network's fault because they kept trying to. Uh, that upsets me so much because of how much potential the show had is uh Korra, uh Avatar the Last yeah. Airbender. Yeah. Where the pacing and that there are seasons that like build up and then just like the pacing so off and it's just so upsetting because like because the network was just like, hey there's a lot of network stuff that happened. Uh, I don't really remember all the exact I details. I got you. But, There's a lot yeah, of it where season one, it was meant to be a limited <laughs> series where it was only 10 yes. episodes. At the end of that, near the end, they were told, actually, we're going to renew it for a second season anyway. So yes. they had to, I, I believe they had a second ending ready where they could they could pull that out and like tweak the final ending to mm. adjust for them having told a full story. They then had season two, which had to start from the beginning, essentially, because they didn't have anything planned for a season two. Thankfully, yeah. they got renewed for three and four, both at the same time. Problem was they were mm. making those seasons concurrently. So they were making season three episodes and then jumping over to make season four episodes all at once. Yeah. Uh, and thankfully, three and four are where it's the most cohesive. But they had to play with the, the hamstrings uh, yeah. that they were given. And they were very weak hamstrings. Yeah, because like if, if you look at the entire series like as a whole, it feels very disconjointed and like kind of all mm. over the place um but whenever you realize like why it is the way it is it makes a lot more sense like oh that man i wish i wish they would have given you more that's also like, the I only wish, animated yeah. show that i can think of where they were actually still editing the episode for the finale up until like the week it aired like they were that. finishing that wait for real <laughs> yeah yeah like <laughs> they were finishing that as it was coming out and I'm oh, not yeah. talking like God. color grading. I'm not talking like final touches. I'm talking like they were struggling because yeah. of the, how Nickelodeon, because wow. Nickelodeon wow. at that point, the other thing with that was that that show, they started it at a 10 a.m. Saturday morning time slot when the target yeah. audience was very clearly people that watched Avatar The Last Airbender. So people who are now in college yep. was like the, yeah. the, the age group for Korra and they're doing a Saturday morning time slot. So that didn't yeah. go well, obviously. And... Then after partway through season three, because they moved it twice in season two to different time slots, season three, they said, actually, we're just going to put the whole season three and four on Nickelodeon.com and not air them on TV. Yeah, Yeah, that's a weird decision, I feel like, especially for such a popular franchise. It's it's fascinating, especially now that Paramount is relying on Avatar as the one content mill it has left going forward. Like they're finally say. like, oh, cool. We can f- like like the creators finally can make more Avatar things that aren't just graphic mm-hmm. novels because the graphic novels yeah. are like the Avatar stories that they wanted to tell that they couldn't like they wanted to do a, yeah. Zuko's, a Zuko sequel movie that they couldn't mm-hmm. do. So it became a graphic novel mm-hmm. uh, about his mom. I, I, yeah, I heard a lot of good things about the uh, graphic novels. Yeah, broadly, I think uh, that's what I've heard, too. Yeah, but mm-hmm. it that's a fascinating one. It really is. Yeah, absolutely. Like the moment you said that just Cora came to mind, I'm like, man, because I really I really love the first season. Like I was so into the first season and then the second season, I'm like, oh, this feels. Jarring yeah. two is two is not a good yeah. season. Two is not very good. Yeah. And it just kept getting weirder. It, it was just a weird, odd time. Um, I um, I'll throw out one that's a show with not great pacing that might get some flack, which Mm. is the Sopranos because I haven't seen enough of it to know because that show is still constricted by the old concept of what 
serialized television had to be, as much as it completely changes the game for everything that comes after it, it mm-hmm. runs into the issue where every season has a new villain of the month and they are disposed uh, of and they yeah. are it's moved along. The pacing episode to episode is pristine, you know, mm-hmm. but they run into that issue where every season it's like, oh, this is another person in the mob that just got out of jail. So he's the new Man. he's the new guy. And then it's like, OK, uh, hi, Steve Buscemi. Like, <laughs> so well, I think that's Boardwalk Empire. <laughs> no, Steve Buscemi is is the is the yeah. villain of the month in season four. Oh, no, yeah, really. it, um, I don't know what season, but he's I in the Sopranos. Four. I know that. Yeah, I didn't realize that uh, the Sopranos had the anime like arc uh, convention. <laughs> yeah, yes. and it's solely because like that's that's how TV was. Mm-hmm. Like even even yeah. carrying stuff from episode to episode just was not done really mm-hmm. before the Sopranos like started the golden age of television as we know yeah. it. Um, that's insane. So you man. give it a that's pass, so... but the pacing yeah. still struggles for that. Yeah, gosh, so they really went down the Power Rangers route where it was just like, well. Uh, Godor, you're going out there today to <laughs> see Buscemi. Well, and plus the power scale, like Buscemi was so strong, like they, yeah. when they he, had to when stop he, it. that's a funny sentence. When he of fired off his first Kamehameha, like it was, it was weird. <laughs> yeah, and I it felt was. things a little bit aroused, mm-hmm. but as you but should, mostly aroused. Agree strongly. Yeah, dude, and I think with that, that's not making. Perhaps. Speaking time of good pacing, on. Crubcast is the best paced podcast on the internet. Yeah. You 100%. can't prove us wrong. Everything yeah. here is scripted. I yeah. go running. It's while true. I do this. Even even Sean forgetting to uh, even Sean forgetting all of his lines through was the part, uh, beginning it was written of the down as one of the lines. Yeah. 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 Our yeah. writers are good. So, uh, mm-hmm. as a reminder, if you didn't already, uh do hit the like button, if, uh, leave us a review if you haven't already in the audio realms. Uh we greatly appreciate it. Uh, but we're going to jump to the Patreon question of the week, which, uh, if you didn't know, is a thing that you can also get on Patreon. We have a separate Patreon tier if you just want to ask us questions of the week, which we will answer mm-hmm. on air. Uh, it goes into a pool, and we just kind of pick whichever one we feel is the the most fun for that episode. So uh, you can join that for as little as $2, which is also known as throwing a quarter at Brody. <laughs> because it's, true. it's all split yeah. eight ways, so we just throw a quarter at him, and he's Canadian, so it means more. It does. So the crazy even asks, keeping it simple this week, what's your favorite film of all time and why? Please write a 10 page essay and have it on mm. my desk by the time you finish reading this prompt. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah, it's done. It's done. It's on your desk. Check check under your seat. <laughs> I made the chat GPT write my essay. <laughs> Here's what happened. It plagiarized Gosh. the entirety of <laughs> Never mind, I was gonna make a bad joke. LOL. It's fine. Um I feel like people are gonna look at me differently after I say what mine is. Go ahead. We always look at you differently. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it it's it's Pulp Fiction. It's Pulp Fiction. I love Quentin really? Tarantino. That's that's fine, dude. I of mm-hmm. Quentin Tarantino movies. Um, okay. I've seen all of them except for Jackie Brown, and I've enjoyed all of them. And except I haven't for Jackie seen Jackie Brown. Brown. Yeah, except for yeah. Jackie Brown. I haven't seen Jackie Brown. Um, wow, we, the guy just knows, the guy just knows how to do it the way that mm-hmm. I just watch the movie and I, and it, it scratches an itch in my brain. Mm. You know, I just really think, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe add some substance to this. I like, I'm a big fan of the nonlinear storytelling. Mm-hmm. I think it helps me ask more questions than I would if the stories were told linearly. I think it's the perfect way to reveal information in sort of a non-standard way. I think it's really unique. It's got a lot of character. It's got a lot of charm that draws me in. Mm. Trav, what's yours? Um, so I'm I'm a Marvel shill, so I'm going to try to not pick something that's part of my serialized corporate... I like sp- Spider-Man 3. Yeah. Um... <laughs> If if I uh, so I mean if I if I am accounting for Marvel movies, um, mm-hmm. probably the first Iron Man. I I just have a soft spot for it. Very good mm-hmm. movie. Um, I literally there was a period of time in my high school life where I just didn't have internet, but I had a bunch of DVDs. Um, and after school, because I'm picky with what I watched at the time, still kind of am. 
I would literally just watch it like once a day until we got internet. So I like watched that movie like 11 times over two weeks. That was me um, with Stewie Griffin's The Untold Story. Oh, that we have the, so much in common. That was one of the few DVDs that we had when we didn't have cable when I was a kid for a while. So, uh, okay. Yeah. It was me with the um, Now CDs, believe it or not. Before I had an iPod, I listened to the Now CDs. Like, oh, that explains, that explains again. a lot. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> everything. Um, but uh, if I were to give an answer that isn't part of my serialized Disney series of movies, mm -hmm. I'd probably say the, the first Pacific Rim. Just because Love that movie. It, uh, it is a spectacle of visual effects that I initially wanted to uh, get into as a career after high school. That didn't work out, but mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it's uh, yeah, probably probably that one. And Excellent it, it's a shame it never got a sequel. Yeah, I really wanted Gosh. to watch Atlantic Rim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sean, what about That's you? Like, uh, for me, it is Lord of the Rings: Return of the King. Um, I love all the Lord of the Rings movies, but like the final one has so much going for it. I love the war scenes. I love the poetry that. The actors portray show uh, Tolkien's words. That's a sentence that I messed up, but it doesn't matter uh, because it's just okay. It's written, so scripted, good. absolutely. But um, the actors do an incredible job with everything that they're given. The practical effects, um, the story beats, the how everything just comes together at the end. Uh, and it has probably my favorite ending of all time. Like watching the ship sail off. Like every time I watch that, like I just. I get teary eyed every single time, but like, man, that that entire movie and I get it. It's like a three and a half hour long film, probably longer with the extended, but it's so good every single time where I just like sit down and it is just mesmerized because like that's such that movie came out in what uh, like, like the early 2000s and it still holds up extremely well with all of its effects, even the CGI. It's incredible. Masterclass. And speaking of Masterclass, uh, Kevin, we have yours? one over on Masterclass.com forward slash crop. <laughs> Not until they pay us. They, they we don't um, Ble uh, edit or bleep that. I'm, just, I'm, I'm a, just kidding. Don't do that. I'm a I'm a weird one because I don't really look at movies as a as a favorite. I don't mm. really like with games. It's really just comes down to like, yeah, that's I know Ratchet that's and Clank is my too, yeah. is my childhood favorite. The Like mm. a Dragon is one of my adulthood favorites, but it, I don't really, I don't rank them because it's going to change depending on the day. Uh, I'm also, I, I'm not always a movie guy, so it's also tough for me to name one. Mm -hmm. So I'll name a few that I watched in the last few years that I can think of off the top of my head that I really liked. Mm. Uh, Hello Kitty 2. <laughs> Hello Kitty 3. Yeah, that's a good one. Hello Kitty 5. 4 was kind of weird. Yeah, four I didn't like so how they replaced, four yeah, they replaced really. Tobey Maguire and I wasn't okay with it. Yeah. The Trolls 2. <laughs> I like Trolls 2 a lot. Um, What about Trolls World Tour? Dune 2 was that? really good. I liked Dune 2. Dune 2. Yeah. Dune, two. <laughs> uh, Dune, Dune yeah. 1 was also good. I watched them both back to back. They were very good. Uh... <laughs> Hello Kitty 6. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right, no, I, right. Right up there with Tunes 1 I'll, and 2. I'll throw out, like, the Safdie brothers and are ones that really stick out to me lately um, because they capture tension in a way that – and anxiety in a way that mm. very few other directors have for me. Uh, like, mm. those movies, like, Good Time – uncut gems those are they're, they're thrillers but i consider them true horror movies at times even though they're Agreed. not at all scary they <laughs> they get you anxious and upset like a horror movie should it's true yeah. and I, I i think that uh i think that good time in particular i think that's the better movie i think that's mm. one of pattinson's best roles uh that i've seen him in because uh, he he blends into it perfectly and so that's one that sticks out to me. I don't watch it frequently because I don't want anxiety frequently. <laughs> uh, Makes one of us. But no, but I feel that I feel super that super well done. Super yeah, well done I, movies. I really loved Uncut Gems. I have to watch Good Time. Yeah, no, it's it's Good Time's only like ninety minutes too. It's really short. 
uh, which is oh, nice. Sick. It's like the perfect length. It shouldn't go on any longer. Uh, and, and there's a lot to leave you thinking about it in, in terms of how they, they, they've designed those characters. Yeah. Um, so and I, I heard – Yeah. And I heard that if you watch the Crubcast with Good Time, it's also 90 minutes long. And if you sync them up perfectly, they actually match the movie very well. If you yeah. sync up some of our early Crubcasts, the early 90-minute ones with Good Time, like, mm. it works. It matches. It works perfectly. Yeah. 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 yeah, trust me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we do that frequently when we script our podcasts. Yeah. So, we I mean, actually have just plagiarized the script to Good Time. No one's and, found uh, out yet. Just synced it. No yeah. one's found out. I yeah. don't know how. Um, yeah. Weird, because yeah. we're the uh, award-winning podcast. You think that someone would have looked into that by now? But yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially the people that gave us the award. Yeah, yeah. But I can't yeah. keep a straight face. I'm sorry. That's <laughs> so funny. Uh, also, Hello no, Kitty. I didn't mean to activate my Google Assistant. Sorry. Hello Kitty One was pretty good too. I right. disagree. Really? You don't like yeah. Hello Kitty One? No, I think that Hello Kitty One is just shallow and pedantic. What do you think about the pacing of it, though? It's just. <laughs> Very slow, and then they, like, kind of throw too much at you yeah. in the middle. Like, especially, like, I, I I hate to bring, you know, I don't even care if I spoil the Dude, movie. I just didn't think that they like, needed. They didn't need that sex scene, okay? They just they didn't, didn't need, need the sex scene. And the live-action you know Fairly Odd Parents movie is really good, too. I think Goodbye Kitty's oh. reveal was just so not, like, done very well. No, like, we like, get it. It's your dad. Wait. Congrats. Yeah. I don't freaking care. <laughs> Fairly Odd Parents live action movie. Oh yeah, that that actually also ties into Hello Kitty. Yeah, that's true. It's all pink. What? Thanks for watching or listening to this week's <laughs> edition of the Crubcast. Uh, let us know what some of your favorite examples of good pacing in games or movies or shows are uh, in the comments if you're watching on the YouTube feed. Or let us know on Discord. If you go to uh, crub.org slash join, you can uh, join the Discord uh, and get a bunch of cool rooms where we uh, like to chat with everybody and have a good time. Pardon the pun, because I just talked about Good Time, the movie. Do, do we have anything like else good burger? we want to say? Good Burger 2 was pretty good. Good Burger 2? <laughs> the second one? Yeah. Yeah, there is. Yeah. I didn't they I didn't like just this. make that like recently? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs>